Hello everybody and welcome to part two of 2024 to 2025 Plant Zoo DLC speculation. So I came up with a few extra ideas to enrich the game's future with new species and come up with a possible timeline that we could be looking at for the next two years if support continues into 2025. Now there are a couple of packs here that would probably be sacrificial for some better packs. Most of them are animal packs as Everyone knows that I'm a big fan of the animal packs over the scenery packs as I don't really see too much other themes coming into the game, though I have suggested two in this in this video. So without wasting more time, let's get into it. So this is the roster of animals from the previous video. So got everything from the Kawati to the pheasants of the Avery pack. And this is the roster that we're looking at for this video. So it's a little bit shorter, but to not tease you too much about what's going to be in here, let's start. So the first video um, DLC here, you might recognize from the previous video, but I've renamed it to Pacific Northwest Pack as it is in that area more specifically rather than just a woodland pack and with native american scenery i thought it was appropriate to include all north american animals so the animals i have are largely familiar the american black bear as our flagship the wapiti or elk as our second flagship the mountain goat is an animal i've added in here as i think they're just a magnificent species that i'd love to see in this game and with the tarkin that we've just gotten goat antelope seem to be coming into the game now now we just need the muskox after it now the virginia opossum has remained the same as our marsupial of the pack and pileated woodpecker as our walkthrough exhibit animal as i think it's just too perfect of a pick and i have also changed up the forest animal pack a little bit with our flagship now being the golden snub-nosed monkey an animal from the mountainous forests of china with this distinct blue face and bright orange fur, it would make a striking flagship for this pack. I have moved the wild turkey to this DLC as I think it would be much better in a animal pack. So let me know what you think about it. Snowshoe Hare is also returning as our Lagomorph, one of the first Lagomorphs we would receive, I would imagine. The North American or Canadian porcupine also returns as one of our arboreal species along with the bobcat or red lynx, a species widespread across North America's forests. The tanuki or Japanese raccoon dog also returns for another Asian slot. The white-tailed deer is our undulate of the pack, as I didn't want to overdo the other groups of animals and make this animal pack a bit more realistic with more recyclable animals, as that is what animal packs are largely consisting of. So white-tailed deer is a species found across North and Central America and into some parts of Northern, Northern South America. So it's a very widespread species found in forests, deserts, grasslands, and all sorts of biomes around the Americas. I've also changed our exhibit animals to the common box turtle. As, as much as I would love to have the sugar glider and think it is actually a better pick, the common box turtle comes in a variety of colors. And with the Herman's tortoise, it would be a pretty solid animal to add in the exhibits now. One of the most disputed packs is the Central America pack. Another South American themed scenery pack is not getting the most positive eyes from the, from the community. So I'm gonna take a risk here and suggest what it could possibly contain. Now the scenery could be stuff like Caribbean scenery and Mayan and Aztec architecture. Those are just my thoughts, but when it comes to the animals, that's where I sort of struggled a bit, but then found a few that would actually be appropriate for this area. Joffroy spider monkey is by far the most notable primate from this region and one of the most popular, utilizing brachiation as well as not being an ape, so it'd be the first to do that in the game. And they are also the most common spider monkey into captivity and could be utilized into a whole range of exhibits. The ocelot is the second cat behind the jaguar that lives in the rainforest, although pumas, I'm pretty sure, live in the, in the rainforest as well. But ocelots are 
the second one that comes to mind when I think of Central America's rainforests. And it would be a great addition, being, I think, 18 on the meta wish list, at least the 2023 one. Interested to see where it lands on 2024s. The third animal is the kinkajou, also known as the honey bear, as despite it being listed as a carnivore, it dines on insects and honey and is one of the most notable pollinators of the Costa Rican and Central American rainforest as a whole. Also found in South America, this relative of the raccoon would be a great nocturnal addition to the game. The bush dog, if you've been following my community feed lately, I have grown a bit of an attachment to. Though I've never seen one in real life, this little canid would be a great addition to the game and would add some diversity to a, a currently lacking Latin American roster. We already have the main wolf, but why not get South America's second most famous canid? And the exhibit animal is one of my favorite reptiles of all time, the plumes basilisk, also known as the Jesus Christ lizard, as they are known for running across water with ease. They're lightweight and wide feet and long. I think their toes have fringes on them to allow them to remain buoyant. Yeah, they're, they're a very cool lizard that if that could be recreated in the exhibit boxes, that would be a really cool feature. But let me know what you think of the Central America Animal Pack. Now, if the Central America Animal Pack were to happen, the Latin America Animal Pack would have to be changed, changed up a little bit. So many of the animals are kept the same, those being animals like the South American Coatamundi, the black and gold howler monkey. In place of the Joffrey spider monkey, I've placed the common squirrel monkey, a notable small species from South America. The great area has also returned. South American tapir taking the place of the ocelot as the continent's largest land animal, and would be a great addition nonetheless with its distinct mohawk. The work that Frontier did on the Malayan Tapir remaster, I'd really like to see that applied to the South American Tapir, as these guys are really cool looking. Southern Tamandua also remains the same, as I stated in the last video. If they were to, if Frontier were to update the Chinese pangolin to be able to climb, the Southern Tamandua could piggyback on that update somewhat, utilizing a very similar rig and similar animations. So that could be sort of easy way in for the Tamandua. Patagonia Mara is also in this pack, one of the continent's most notable rodents that also resembles undulates in some perspectives, you could say. And the many monkeys, tamarins and marmosets all return as well. If Central America pack were not to happen, the Latin America animal pack would remain largely the same, with the South American Coatamundi, Black and Gold Howler Monkey, Joffrey Spider Monkey, Greater Rio, Ocelot, Southern Tamandua, Patagonia Mara, I thought the bush dog is a possible alternative as I would just love to see them, and the many monkeys, tamarins and marmosets also thrown in here as well. Another DLC that's seen a bit of debate is the Safari Animal Pack. Now this pack has gone through a few changes as you'll see later. The Secretary Bird, but don't fret. The, se the Secretary Bird is in another place that I think will be very suitable for it, given its endangered status. Bit of a hint there. So the new flagship is the highly requested Hammer Dryas Baboon, a silver-haired baboon that dominates the Red Sea, at least the fringes of it. One of the only primates found in Africa and in the Middle East, if not the only primate, because I don't know of any others, other than humans, of course. But other than the hammer drive baboon, this pack also includes the shoe bill, the honey badger, the greater kudu, the black buck. I thought including both these antelope would just be a good idea. The African spurred tortoise and the serval as our habitat lot and these Jackson's chameleon as the exhibit animal. Let me know what you think of this pack, whether you would be happy with it or not. It does include some popular animals, so it'd probably be enticing for some. An alternative safari animal pack was suggested in my comments the other day, and I think this would be, I, would, I wouldn't mind it personally. We have the hammer drives baboon, the shoe bill, the honey badger, the Maasai giraffe, the impala, Nile crocodile, and the African leopard. All these species would be pretty easy for Frontier to whip up and would really 
emphasize the safari aesthetic as these animals are very common on safaris in particularly eastern africa so let me know what you think of that and jackson's chameleon of course remains the same as we just need a chameleon at this point A DLC I've seen a lot of people wanting over the years is a petting zoo animal pack. All animals that would be quite easy to make for Frontier. Keep that in mind for a little bit later. And very comfortable around guests, allowing for walkthrough petting zoos and put potential guest animal interactions in the same update. But you'll have to see in <laughs> where I've placed it. I have no idea if this will actually happen, but we'll see. So the animals I've included are somewhat non-specific. Non so we have the goat, the cattle, chicken, pig, sheep, pony, domestic rabbit, and guinea pig. Now I did have the donkey in there instead of the pony, but I think ponies, they come in a more diverse selection of breeds than donkeys. So the reason I've been non-specific is Frontier could just pick anything. They could go for any breed of these animals. I've only given you the general outline of what the potential is here. So like you have goats, you have cows, chickens, pigs, sheep, ponies, rabbits, and guinea pigs. All animals that you'd find in a petting zoo and easy to make for Frontier. If, the, if this pack were to come after the forest animal pack, they could just use the uh, snowshoe hair rig with the domestic rabbit here. So it would be an easy fix there and goats would utilize of course the ibex and doll sheep cattle i think you'd have an idea chicken i mean they could potentially do a new rig for the chicken and also just utilize the indian peafowl rig instead the pig of course utilizing pig rigs sheep ponies guinea pig is one that i would be interested in but i don't know if it would be a habitat animal or an exhibit animal i placed it in the exhibit animal spot as you don't necessarily see them roaming around too too much and neither with the domestic rabbits either but we'll have to see what happens with these now getting back to that secretary bird we have the threatened species animal pack one of my most popular ideas though i have sort of dropped all the wild animal ideas just to make it more plausible for frontier to actually make so the animals i've included are some of the more familiar Sumatran rhinoceros, now a lot of people will say, oh, the Sumatran rhino is not kept in captivity. Well, it was and kept very successfully at the Cincinnati Zoo, so much so that they bred three, I believe. And given their past in captivity, we also just got the saiga. The saiga is not really an animal that you'd associate with zoos, but we have it. So <laughs> I think Sumatran rhino is a viable inclusion. Now, on to the other animals. We have the secretary bird, as it is listed as endangered as of, I think, 2021. The Goodfellows tree kangaroo, another very popular animal. The cockerel safaka, again, another very popular animal. Then we have the Pira David's deer, an extinct in the wild um, species of deer from China. The Cuban crocodile, one of my personal favorite crocodilians, and would be really cool to see in the game, as they are known to chase after threats and prey so i think that would be a really cool crocodilian they're also quite small too so sort of a mid-range between i think an alligator and the spectacle caiman or about the same size as the spectacle caiman i don't know and our last animal is the black-footed ferret a notable conservation story happening in america right now and our exhibit animal is the panamanian golden frog another species with the extinct in the wild listing due to i think a fungus that has affected their population so drastically in the wild that they only exist in captivity. Now this is a fun idea that I've seen tossed up. The Nocturnal Animal Pack, sort of the Animal Pack sequel to the Twilight Pack. Now, judging by the background, let's see if you remember what that background means. So our habitat animals are things you would expect. We have the eye eye. The burrowing owl, I mean, you probably wouldn't expect most of these, but burrowing owl, Brazilian porcupine, the ard wolf, the kinkajee returning here, the pygmy slow loris, and the short beaked echidna as our habitat animals. And our exhibit animal, the eastern firefly. Now, we've got butterflies in the walkthrough exhibits, but how cool would it be to have a nighttime zoo with eastern fireflies? Just lighting up your walkthrough exhibits, and it would look very beautiful. 
I would personally love to see this added, either as a walkthrough exhibit animal or as just a update ambience. Like you can just place these markers that have fireflies flying around. I think that would be really cool and would look quite cool as well. But let me know what you think of that. The alternative exhibit animal is the Tokei Gecko. Easily one of the most requested exhibit animals as we don't have a gecko. And I think a gecko would be a really cool addition nonetheless, especially this one. They make a very distinct toke sound, which is how they got their name. Now we come to towards the end of our video here. So this is where I'm going to discuss the possible timeline that we could be looking at. So spring, in, in my case, autumn of 2024, we have the Latin America Animal Pack. Now, I personally put the bush dog over the Patagonia Mara as I'm the simp for the bush dog. <laughs> but of course, the Patagonia Mara could come in instead. But I think for the bush dog, given its ease to make in comparison to the Patagonia Mara's, Mara's are unlike any other animal we have in the game. Bush dog seems more plausible as an animal that Frontier would go for in this case. So that's my main reasoning behind this. For summer, we have the coastal animal pack, as you remember from last video, with animals like the walrus, sea otter, pelican, which has become a lot more possible with the swan, the West Indian manatee, rock hopper penguin, sea turtle, American flamingo, and coconut crab. All these animals would really evoke a beachside um, feel. The scenery pack of 2024 would be the Pacific Northwest pack, adding in, of course, the name American Scenery. So this is just my idea, but there could be more scenery packs, like we could still get that Central America pack. Like, it's still a possibility, but I would kind of hope not. Our anniversary animals are tossed up between the African Leopard and the Nile Crocodile. These two would make, both make incredible anniversary animals and would, be, may, would make really good additions to the base game. And our last pack being the Alpine Animal Pack. Returning animals including the Markor, the Gelada, Spectacle Bear, Muskox, Palace's Cat, Golden Pheasant, Rock Hyrax, and the Chinese Giant Salamander. Moving on to that next year, 2025. Most debatable year in Planet 2 history, I think. With the Threatened Species Animal Pack being our Spring DLC, including all the animals mentioned here. The Safari Animal Pack. Now, I placed the Patagonia Mara here as I've seen them often showcased at safari parks, like Bali Safari Park's got them and a few others that I can't think of off the top of my head. But they are probably South America's best safari park animal, although you could argue Greater Rhea as well. But I think the Patagonia Mara would be a great addition here as it would be probably the most unique animal of the pack given it, all the others could utilize already existing rigs. The forest animal pack comes in here as our, is it winter? No, not winter, uh, autumn, autumn DLC. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm trying to work in Northern Hemisphere terms when I'm a Southern Hemisphere person, so forgive me. Now, the anniversary here is not a single animal. I think the petting zoo animal pack, now it might not happen. <laughs> it probably would not happen. A whole animal pack of very easy to make animals, personally. Um, I don't think that would come as a anniversary gift, though it could. It would be a very generous anniversary gift, nonetheless. But let me know what you think. Is a petting zoo a possibility for anniversary, or should they just stick with one animal per year? Let me know what you think. And the last animal pack here is the Avery pack, the big final DLC in Planet Zoo. A pack that would give us all the major bird groups that most people would want. We have eiders, puffins, toucans, macaws, kookaburras, cockatoos, spoonbills, ibises, hornbills, miners, storks, guinea fowls, eagles, swans, more swans than that matter, ducks, geese, falcons and starlings, condors and vultures, owls and nightjars, cranes and finches, pigeons and birds of paradise, row runners, the burrowing owl, because I don't think nocturnal is going to happen, unfortunately. Lorikeets and cormorants, hoopoes and hawks, hummingbirds and oropendolas, inca terns and pelicans, kingfishers and quails, ptarmigans and pheasants, 
the Baltimore Oriole, Rollers and Taracos, Blue Jay and the Budgerigar. All animals that represent all the, the packs that came before. So that's just what I think the Avery pack could look like, but it could look entirely different. Probably just giving us a minimum of two representatives from each group, potentially. As in this case, most animals in these groups would act very similar to the next. And it would be a very good way to wrap up Planet Zoo with a variety of Avery birds and land birds to decorate our exhibits and zoos with. And with that timeline over, these are the packs that unfortunately would not make it. The Central America pack and this other Latin America animal pack with the common squirrel monkey and South American tapir. I don't think that's going to happen, unfortunately. Um, the primate animal pack, as I include the golden snub-nosed monkey, eye on cockerel, safari, and other ideas. And the safari animal pack that included all those other animals, though it is still quite likely. I don't know if it would actually happen. And the nocturnal animal pack, unfortunately, as much as I would love to see it, it would, I don't think it will happen in the end. I think Frontier is just going to end up doing all the essential animals first and then wrapping it all up with the Avery pack. But let me know what you think, this two-parter series. <laughs> See how it ends. And, yeah, that's it for this video, and of these two DLC speculation videos. I was going to do aquariums, but I think Avery is just the way we're going to end it here, and aquariums will potentially be a part of something like a Planet Zoo 2, or a Planet Aquarium. Whatever it ends up being, that will probably be the game that's going to happen in. And, yeah, let me know what you think of my timeline for Planet Zoo's future and these new DLC ideas. What do you think of the Bush Dog as an addition to the Latin America Animal Pack, potentially? And, yeah, leave all your thoughts and comments down below. Like if you enjoyed the video and subscribe for more, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye. Also, just a quick disclaimer, I am doing this while recovering from surgery, so I don't know if I said ow at all, but if I did, that is probably why. And that is probably also going to be the reason why the videos are going to be a little bit more infrequent. So, yeah, just keep that in mind. If you're expecting more videos in this holiday period, at least for Australia, it's a holiday period. I don't know what it is for the rest of the world. But, um, yeah. Surgery recovery is the reason why the videos will be somewhat more infrequent and all the plans I was hoping to get done in the holidays are somewhat on hold. So, yeah, just letting you know there. But have a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.